Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Sanctuary. It is Dynasty Monday and of course I'm here to talk you through some risers and fallers. Stick around as I walk you through five of the biggest risers, five of the biggest fallers after this week's slate of action. But make sure you stay to the end because not all risers are buys and not all fallers are sales. I'm going to talk you through their trade value, whether I'd be buying or selling, and of course what I would want to pay for them. Let's start at the top. The big man, Amon Ross St. Brown, another phenomenal week, cleared 30 fantasy points yet again. He's currently the wide receiver seven overall, averaging over 21 fantasy points a game. What he is doing is absolutely mind-blowing. He is so efficient, averaging over 2.5 fantasy points per touch, clearing 100 yards a game. He is easily a top five dynasty wide receiver. I would happily pay three firsts for him in a straight-up trade right now. Sadly, I think if you're looking to acquire him, you've probably missed the boat. I think his value means that he's in that world where he's difficult to acquire. Maybe you can move off, you know, a, a tier two wide receiver, someone like a Devonta Smith, add an asset to go and get Amros and Brown. But he's expensive, so you better load up the Brinks truck if you're going to go and get him. But I, I truly believe that his value is incubated. I think he's going nowhere for the next couple of years and he's going to be a elite fantasy option for at least the next two to three years. Another riser after this week's slate of action, what can I say? CD Lamb, you know that I'm a massive CD Lamb fan. I've been banging that drum as him as the Dynasty wide receiver three for probably about a year, maybe 18 months. He's up to the wide receiver four overall, currently in points scored. For me, he is now in that top tier of Dynasty wide receivers. It is Justin Jefferson, it is Jamar Chase, and it is C.D. Lamb. They are the elite three. Um, I would happily pay three first, the same as Amara St. Brown. I do think he's at that point where you can't acquire him, especially off the last couple of weeks. The really exciting thing is that the Cowboys have finally realised he is not just a slot receiver. He's a true 50-50 role. He's lining up in the slot. He's getting that volume of targets from there. But he's also winning outside. He's running those traditional X routes. As you can see on the screen there, 3.4 yards per out run, 30% targets per route run. This guy is an absolute stud. And paired with that press slot, he's going nowhere. I am absolutely happy to build around him as one of those cornerstone players. And he's a first-round pick in startups right now. The next riser, building off the back of CeeDee Lamb, of course we're talking about Dak Prescott. Again, similar value. He's flirting with that first round Superflex startup pick. Look, the QB4 in points per game, but the best and most intriguing number for me right now, 0.24 EPA per play. Most MVPs over the last 10 years have been around 0.25 EPA per play. And Dak Prescott is absolutely in that conversation right now. He's playing phenomenal football. This offense is is far more explosive and far better as a passing offense than I thought it was going to be coming into the year. And you look at that big time throw rate up near five percent. Dak is just getting it done, and yeah, easily a, a you know I talked in the preseason of he's that guy you're ecstatic if he's your QB two, but you feel a little bit disappointed if he's your QB one. Right now, if he's your QB two, then you're probably winning some uh, winning some games and looking towards the title because he's absolutely balling out. The next riser, look, this is a guy that I've been pretty down on. I sort of thought that the bubble was going to burst, but QBA overall, he's had five top 12 weeks. Yeah, I don't think he's still don't think he fully knows the offense, but he's getting it done and he's he's rushing, which is, we all know, incredibly valuable for, uh, for dynasty players and fantasy production. I do think he's still not in that nailed on starter for 2024 category. I think he's high-end backup. I'd throw him in with the likes of Gardner Minshew, Jacoby Brissett, probably Andy Dalton as that guy that's going to get paid five, six million a year moving forward. Maybe a bridge quarterback for a rookie, but never going to be more than that. I would probably be looking to sell if you can get any second round pick because I don't believe he's going to have starting value next year. But if he keeps performing and you know carries the Vikings to the playoffs, maybe he gets into that world. But for me, I'm getting that now why the hype's there. And I think, I'd, as I said, I'd sell for any second round pick. The next riser, Trey McBride. I was so high on Trey McBride as a rookie, so high after last season. And then when he couldn't keep Zach Ertz coming off the injury, off the field to start the season, I started to call my fandom 
However, Zach Ertz goes to IR and this guy explodes. He's the tight end two in fantasy points since that Zach Ertz injury. He's a tight end 14 overall. This is a guy that is plug and play right now. And there's not many of those at the tight end position. I would... I'd balk at paying a late first. I've got his value as a late first. That's where I'm valuing him. I would ideally like to pay a second. I'd definitely pay a high second. I'd potentially pay a second and a third. If I was desperate at tight end, maybe I'd pay a late first. But I'm a little bit nervous. Sackerts could be coming back in, in another week or two. Do we see Trey McBride start to lose snaps, start to lose target shares to, to Zach Ertz? I hope not, because I think the guy's been fantastic while he's on the field. And with Kyler under centre, this offence could take a step forward. So, yeah, really hopeful about what Trey McBride could be over the next few weeks. If you've liked the risers, hit that subscribe button. Our one goal is to help you win fantasy titles. We're helping people left, right and centre, whether that be DFS, Dynasty, Redraft, Best Ball. Hit that subscribe and stick around and you will win more fantasy matchups. It's time to get negative. We move across to the fallers. The first big faller, Carl Pitts. I resisted him as a rookie. I thought the price was too expensive. I resisted him last year. I thought the price was too expensive. This offseason, I dove headfirst into Carl Pitts. I thought the price was right. I thought the offense was coming together. I believed in Arthur Smith. Man, is he just disappointed. All the underlying numbers are there. 18.8% target share. Good A dot. He's getting the right sort of targets, but the production is just not there. This offense needs a big oomph, needs kick up the backside. He's the tight end 17. You can't start him, which is just an awful place to be. I don't know if you can sell because I'd want at least a first round pick, probably a late first to move on from him. And I don't think you're going to get that in a trade. So he's probably just a hold for now. we got Desmond Ritter coming back in at quarterback this week. Hopefully a couple of weeks on the sideline will reinvigorate him and this offense can take a step forward and start winning games again. I don't think Carl Pitts is fully healthy. So maybe there is some upside for a sell window down the road. But for now, I think you've just got to hold and... Hope for the best and move on. The next faller, Derek Carr. We see another injury to that shoulder, potentially concussion. He's just not getting it done. The contract means his value's incubated. He's going to be a starter in New Orleans next year. But QB 27 in points per game. He's averaging zero EPA per play. And he's not had a single top five week so far this year. The ceiling's not there. He's nothing more than a low-end QB2. If he you're starting him every week in a Superflex League, you're probably not winning many games. It's just tough he's sort of in that qb3 safe backup maybe you can sort of almost call him like a super flex quarterback roster plugger but hard to feel particularly ecstatic about what he's doing right now i would love to move on from him for any first round pick but maybe the move is to pivot to somebody with a little bit more juice a little bit more upside maybe you take a risk on someone like jordan love that maybe he can you know he can put it together down the stretch, but I just think Derek Carr is, is what he is, quite frankly, right now. The next faller, Mac Jones. Are we about to see him benched? Bailey Zappi comes in yet again at the game in Germany. Bill Belichick was asked today what, what that means, and he said, I need to review the tape. So, look, I think the Patriots are tanking for a high pick. I don't think Mac Jones is going to be the starting quarterback beyond this season, so maybe it is just a case of sell, get what you can. He's not getting it done for fantasy. I don't think he's getting it done in the NFL. And I think his days as a starting quarterback in the league are very much numbered. So, yeah, if you can get a second round pick, do that right now. The next faller, Christian Watson. Long time viewers will know I'm not the biggest Christian Watson fan. I thought he was inflated by touchdown numbers and unsustainable volume of high value touches last year. He's not had a single top 24 week. He's wide receiver 68 in points per game. He's just a boom bust option without much boom right now. And Jordan Love doesn't look 100% right. I think this offense has got some flash, but he's just not getting the volume that you feel comfortable starting him. So he's just in that point where, yes, there's some upside. Yes, there's some potential, but it's probably going to happen on your bench. So I'd love to pivot off him. Maybe you can go and target one of the young wide receivers. Can you get a Josh Downs? Can you get a Rashi Rice? Sell off that name value from that hype last year. I think if you're going to do it, you need to do it quickly because another couple of bad weeks and his value will be plummeting even further. And then the final faller, Zach Moss. This is now Jonathan Taylor's backfield. It's two weeks 
on the trot of 70% plus usage for Jonathan Taylor. But Zach Moss is a free agent at the end of the year. He is one of my favourite stealth buy candidates if you are looking for 2024. If you can go and get him for, you know, a couple of thirds, maybe even a late second, I think that he has absolutely got potential to be a starting running back somewhere next year or at worst a 1B in a split backfield. We saw when he was on the field, he was dynamite. He was explosive. He had four top 12 weeks of fantasy. He gets that all-important target share. If you can go and buy him whilst his dynasty value is falling, I've seen him start to get dropped in redraft leagues. People are going to put him on the back burner and forget about him. Go and scoop him up and hope that in the offseason he sees that value spike when he signs somewhere and the hype begins. Disagree with any of these 10 players? Do you think there's someone that I've missed out? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, stick around. We've got so much more content coming. We're going to have the Thursday preview show. We've got Tom's DFS content. And of course, I'll be back next week with some dynasty stuff.